Hello everyone, thanks for popping on by. I'm Evan Abrams and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna take these photos and pop them into frame, compiled into a pleasing pastiche, uh, which is to say this thing that's going on on the side of the screen. It's a growing array of these little cutout photographic bits that hopefully come on in a very pleasing way. I'm hoping that all the techniques we get into will help you to apply this to just about any subject matter, any photos you happen to get. However, if you want to follow along and do exactly as I do, then there's a place where you can get these and many, many more stock assets. That's because this week's tutorial is sponsored by Envato Elements, a massive marketplace of stock assets, videos and photos and music and sound effects and after effects templates so many things, unlimited assets for one monthly subscription. Especially like these little kingfishers, little cuties here. But like I said, unlimited assets are just a subscription away. So if you have need for stock assets on the regular, I highly recommend you check them out. Please use the link in the description when you do. As a nice way of saying thanks to Envato for sponsoring the creation of the content on this channel. It's through sponsors like them that we're able to keep the lights on around here and dedicate time to making these tutorials. And speaking of, let's get into it. So while this thing we're creating may look kind of complex, like it's made of a lot of different elements and they're very complicated, it's actually just a collection of fairly simple things. Uh, and then we just kind of repeat them around in sort of arrays and groups. So to start with, I would really recommend that you go ahead and you sketch out what your final composition is gonna look like. You really wanna work with tone and shape, being very general before you get more specific about things like color and texture. So you just kind of build it on in layers. Then you can actually start to go and source images to fill in that stuff. However, once you've got that plan in place and you've got your photos sourced, we need to treat them all so that they're gonna work together. Now, mostly that means we're stripping away the background. So even when you find photos, wonderful photos like this bird, we could of course open this up in Photoshop and take your magic wand, you'll be out of here in no time. But there are some parts that even the magic wand can't really help us out with. And I like to keep it dynamic and try to keep us in After Effects as much as possible. So I'm gonna show you some effects and some techniques that can really make this go quickly. One of them is the now obsolete Luma Key. So you just apply the Luma Key to your photo layer, switch it to key out brighter, or if it's on a black background, you'd go key out darker. And then you just dial in the threshold until more of your image starts to show up. So usually when you have a pure white background, you really only need to give this a couple of bumps. That's dialing in the threshold at which we can actually see things. Now you might need to increase your tolerance. You might need to thin this out a little bit, have those edges come in, and you'll definitely want to feather it. Just a little bit of feather really smooths this out. But these photos that we've chosen to work with are really quite large. So this photo itself is thousands of pixels big. So when we start shrinking this down in our final composition, a lot of these crunchy edges are not gonna be noticed even a little bit. The biggest problem we have are these holes that we've made in the bird because parts of this bird are actually white. So here's a quick way to kind of get around that. First, we want to identify the holes. And we can do that by changing our color space here to look at only the alpha channel which is gonna cause those holes to really show up because we're only looking at what is transparent and what is opaque. So you can see all these, oh, all these little nasty holes all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer. I'm gonna delete the Luma key off of it. I'm gonna poke its eye out. And then I'm just gonna use a mask really quickly, really quick masking to uh, mask these areas that we want to keep. And we don't need to be hyper precise about it um, just as long as we don't kind of overlap the edge too much. But really, we're just trying to cover up the holes. And we're going very quickly. We don't need to spend a whole heap of time because in the end, when we poke this thing's eye back on, as you can see, these holes have been filled up. Now, when we go back to the RGB mode, that might be good enough for us, especially because we are going to, like I said, zoom out very far away. And a lot of those chunky bits, we're not gonna notice them. So Luma Key, even though it's obsolete, is still a good friend. Don't throw it away. There's one more bit of treatment we wanna do to these photos. Even though this is a photo of a fir sprig and this is a photo of a fir branch, the greens of them are not really the same greens. So if we started overlapping them on top of each other, they wouldn't really harmonize very well. So something I recommend you do is trying to harmonize their colors, which I recommend doing by applying a new adjustment layer over top of things. 
And we're going to work with our old friends, curves, get some curves out on here. And we're going to get another friend. We're going to get the hue saturation, that old buddy, they're going to come along for the ride. And you might even want to tint out here, but hue saturation can really take care of a lot of that stuff. Now, before we start working, we're going to be tabbing between these two layers a lot. And even if we went ahead and locked the views and, and had both of these pictures up at the same time, it's still a lot of eyeballing to do. And your eyes can sometimes deceive you. So we're gonna go window, call it the Lumetri scopes. Now the scopes are a way of mathematically displaying all the color information. So right now we are looking at the waveform RGB. I'm gonna call up the vector scope YUV which is my favorite way to try to harmonize these colors. What's really interesting <laughs> about this is that it's literally showing us what's in the view here. So you notice when I zoom in, uh, that kind of changes, right? So you wanna have a look at all of the pixels if you can. And when we go over here to the fur branch, notice that this graph has changed. You know, you can see that, oh yeah, that's pushing out further towards the yellow here. It maybe skews more towards the green. And this fur sprig here, actually pushes closer towards the red. So what we wanna do is try to bring the dots of both of these to be harmonized and very similar. Because really, we're just looking at a bunch of greens here. And in your final composition, the more harmonized these elements are, the more cohesive your final piece is gonna be. So you generally wanna pick one and try to push things uh, towards that. What we can do here is maybe say like, I know, I know, I'm going to uh, increase the saturation here make this a little bit more saturated so it's similar uh, to the spread on this one. And then uh, what are we gonna do? What should we do? We could take its hue and we could hue it more towards the yellow like this. You can see this is literally just rotating, <laughs> rotating the points around like so. Of course, it's being very funny because <laughs> we didn't make an adjustment layer that was large enough. <laughs> so there we go. So we could make it more saturated. We could rotate this around. Now we go back to this fur branch. Oh yes, I see right here. Yes, very, very similar stuff. And if you've never used scopes before, this can be some good practice to harmonize clips with each other. But once all of your assets are happy and harmonized together, everyone's feeling good, we need to start animating these things on. And if we go back to that original idea of doing some pre-production, I recommend that you start setting up some rules for yourself. In this example, we aren't really doing a lot of different types of animation. All of these assets literally come on using the same kind of scale and rotation change, and we just adjust them in different permutations. You wanna kind of uh, chunkify this. You wanna break it into chunks. You know what we say, chunkify me, Captain. So there are a few basic forms that I think you should consider. They are bursts, arms, and then sweeps. Let's talk about bursts first. Uh, what's an example of a burst? Well, this feather array here is a burst. It's kind of, uh, grouping of feathers that comes out. Wonderful feathers. So let's look at how we would construct such a thing. I'm gonna make a new composition and let's call this uh, burst. And in here, I'm going to grab my feathers. And as you can see, you should always try to organize your files so that I'm able to quickly find my feathers. Here they are. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna change the color of this layer to maybe blue so it's easier to see things like the anchor point. And I'm just gonna scale this down. I'm gonna hit Y and bring the anchor point down here because I think it should probably rotate around uh, that point, I think that would be fine. Let's have this thing uh, fan on. Let's see, I'm gonna set the position uh, to be in the middle center by uh, resetting it, Let's scale it down a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alter its rotation and scale. I'm holding down shift while hitting R and S to bring these up. And the scale and rotation, I'm gonna set keyframes at the beginning, uh, move ahead, maybe 10 frames, set keyframes here at the end. We kind of have to decide, you know, how rotated is this gonna be at the beginning? Maybe let's just bump it by negative 45 at the start. We're gonna bring its scale all the way down to zero at the start. And maybe the rotation will take a little bit longer than the scale, so we'll drag that out. Then we'll take these two keyframes, we'll ease them by hitting F9, we'll go into the graph editor here, and let's work with a speed graph, I think. Select these handles and pull them. You can see if I zoom in here, we're just pulling those handles to create this kind of a shape. You can see that this thing is coming on like that. So we might adjust this, maybe more like negative 90 to have that come on. You might start adjusting a little bit more. So maybe this takes 10 frames, maybe this one takes 20 frames, I don't know. I don't know, we're just playing around, we're figuring it out. And now we need more of them, we need more buddies. So we're gonna duplicate this and I've created a bunch of other feathers. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and replace this feather with this other feather. 
Ooh, how wonderful. Rotate it a little bit to fan it out like this. And I'll repeat that a few more times. And I'm just going to adjust their rotations so that they are, they are kind of fanning out from each other. So maybe we try, we start 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 degrees. Or maybe you want less or more. I mean, it's all, it's all up to your taste. Here they are coming on. Ah, how wonderful. We would probably want to offset them in time. So we're just going to grab the layers and just drag them out, drag them out a little bit. Just like this. There are, of course, many third-party plugins and scripts that can make this happen for you, but for something this small, you can really just be manual about it if you really wish. And there you go, you get this kind of a whoosh, 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 lovely kind of array. And even this alone can be something worthwhile to play with. So if we were making a more radial thing, we could take the burst, put this into a new composition, maybe we would scale it down, maybe we'll duplicate it and rotate this 180 degrees, you know, and see how that looks. See, that's a pretty interesting thing. Hey, duplicate it again, and uh, rotate, rotate it into position, maybe like this, try to even stuff out. And already we're getting something really interesting from very simple parts, just by duplicating, replicating, and moving it around. And then we can apply some of the same logic in here by pushing the timing of this a little bit. And isn't that wonderful? From such simple beginnings, we end up with this wonderful modular system. We can start feathering in all kinds of little details. The second kind of thing I wanna talk about is an arm. Now, an arm is a little bit different that we want to think linearly along our path. So, for example, in this in this big old comp here, if we want to look for an arm, we would probably look for uh, this fir tree and fir branch example here. One big thing comes on, then these other bits seem to be attached to it. It's kind of like a branch, but you can do this with all kinds of abstract things. So, if we're going to make an arm example, make a new comp, call it arm, and we're gonna have one element come on and then other elements grow from it. So let's look into some plants. Let's go ahead and grab uh, maybe this fir tree branch. Then we'll just kind of scale it down to size. Cause again, we're just making components that we can reuse elsewhere. Move the anchor point to where we want this thing to be rotating and scaling on from. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, have it do the exact same thing that we did with the feathers. We're setting up rules and we're reusing them. So call up the rotation, call up the scale, holding down shift to bring up more properties as we like. And we're gonna set some keyframes. I'm gonna push them ahead. And let's see, let's see, we're gonna maybe have the branch come on from down below. So let's see, maybe 45 degrees down. And we're gonna scale it up from zero, of course. And the rotation, as we did before, will take longer than the scale. Grab these, ease them, go into the graph editor, pull their handles, see how that comes on. Okay, I'm happy with that. And now for an arm, we need to add more details along this arm. Maybe we wanna add some little fir branches. Add some branches out there. And as you can see, because we harmonized the color, and of course I did it a much more muted way in the example, because I'm a very muted and banal kind of person, these things seem to go together. They just go together. So I'm gonna hit Y, move my anchor point. Let's see, maybe we'll, we'll bring it to here. And now we can maybe use a mask to select you know, only the amount of this that we really need to be focused on. Now, this part needs to be parented to this part, right? Because if they're going to be attached together as an arm, then that's uh, something that we want. And now we just need to position this. Let's see, let's see if we try to sort of make this a little bit denser by bringing this guy out like so. Let's see, I might just grab the scale and rotation that we did with this piece and paste it uh, onto the fir branch, right? Now, of course, the scale isn't going to make a lot of sense because it's been parented, so now it's it's far too small, far too small. Bring it up to 100% of the size, and the rotation, rotation-wise, uh, I'm gonna select both of these keyframes, and then I'm gonna rotate them around. It's rotating up like that, as this one's rotating up, and I'm gonna push this ahead. I'm gonna push this ahead in time because this happens and then that happens, right? So, so the leader and then the follower Follow, follows the lead, excellent, good stuff. And what we might do is we might take these and maybe pinch, pinch those in a little bit so that it happens a little bit faster. There we go. Now we're gonna duplicate and make some more copies of this. So I'm gonna duplicate one and let's see, I'm gonna move it, um, I'm gonna move it backward in time a little bit. I'm gonna move it further up uh, the stock here. I'm gonna move it further up uh, like so, call up the rotation and 
I'm going to select both the rotation keyframes and then just rotate this down. Let's see, maybe like here, maybe this kind of works because I'm trying to fill this in. I'm trying to make this a little bit uh, denser with this stuff. And really we're just playing around, making duplicates, moving them around, rotating them uh, as we like, trying to really fill in uh, fill in this shape a little bit. And then it's all about how you layer these things together and how you massage uh, their movements. So we've made two components, a burst and an arm. Uh, let's talk about another type of component called the sweep. And I know, I know we're taking up so much time doing this, so please bear with me. We've got just one more, just one more I wanna show you. So a sweep, and I'll, I'll do a bit more showing and less telling here. A sweep is when we're going to use masks to reveal something like this branch. What we're doing is we're taking masks and we are, we're just removing them and the masks are set to subtract. So the masks are subtracting how much of this branch we can see. And to make this kind of thing, I recommend that you start by putting a mask over the largest uh, central section of a branch, say, or whatever it is that you're, that you're working with, and start by setting it to none. And by doing that, you can still see the image while you move the points. And we want to create a shape that has pairs of points all along that follow the contours. And then we set keyframes that just pack up the knots. We're just collecting them together. So we just move ahead of frame, collect, move ahead of frame, collect. And then once we're happy with that, we grab all the keyframes, hold down alt, and then we stretch it out to make it longer or shorter. Then we massage these points, making them, uh, putting larger gaps, shorter gaps between them. Easy stuff to do. And then we just come in. If you would like to have more branches, we just repeat the process again for each of the branches. In the end, we set everything to subtract because the masks are taking away and then we're shrinking the masks. So it's a little bit different than working with additive masks. I find it gives you a little bit better control, a little bit better workflow, uh, especially with this kind of thing. So when you finally look at this, just remember that all this is, is a combination of those three things, uh, just with different assets, different arrangements, and putting them in different places and timings. That's literally all we're doing. We're starting from very small chunks and we're building up, we're adding more chunks and we're putting those chunks together and it turns into this. There are a few singles in here as well. The little birds are little hero bits and the fish, they still use the same rules, right? They're still just using scale and rotation with similar motion curves. Very simple, very restrained, very limited uh, in those ways. A little tip that I'll give you here is to think about staggering the motion. Don't make everything happen at once. Points of stillness, think about flow, think about where things are starting from and where things are ending. Our final focus in this piece, I want it to be on this little birdie. So that's why he moves last. That's why he shows up last. It's also why he's a much brighter color than everything else. We could have muted those tones, but we muted everything else except for these birds. This guy got a little bit muted because he's not the hero bird. He's like, look at me more. But this guy's like, no. I'm, I'm the good looking bird. Unfortunately, you do just have to spend a little bit of time pushing things around, finding areas that are too dense, not dense enough with movement, sliding your layers forward and backward until you arrive at a kind of flow that works for you. Now, I don't wanna to talk too much about the text here because there are other tutorials on this channel about animating text in interesting ways. Just to say, if you have questions about it, we are using uh, per character 3D. So each of these little characters is 3D. We're using the ramp up shape and we are pushing pushing a change in position and opacity through that. If you wanna know more about the text, let me know in the comments and I'll try to guide you through. Thanks for popping on by and spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. Hope you learned lots about popping on a photo collage and I hope it all came together for you. If you make something cool with this and I know that you will, please, I would love to see it. Send it at me on Twitter or tag me on Instagram. I'm at EC Abrams on those places. I'd love to see what you make with this stuff. If you're into this kind of thing, learning about motion design, and visual effects after effects then subscribe to this channel we get up new tutorials all the time but also live stuff and sometimes longer form series so make sure you turn on notifications so you won't miss a thing that's it for me thanks again for watching i'm evan abrams and i'll see you around the internet